Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I will show you how to run the graph database Neo4j inside a Docker container on your local machine. Now, if you're absolutely unfamiliar with Docker and want to have an introduction to Docker, this is probably not the right video for you. Um, so you have to look around for tutorials on Docker itself. If you're unfamiliar with Docker and just want to run Neo4j as um, a, a Docker container on your local machine, uh, then you should be good because we'll cover everything and we'll, we'll also clean up uh, after us so that you don't use any unnecessary space. Uh, all you need to do is install Docker beforehand. That should be quite straightforward. And of course, if you have already Docker installed on your machine and are familiar with Docker, um, I'll show you how to run a Docker container. That's pretty straightforward. So let's just start. So we're on a Mac and using, uh, of course, Linux directories and stuff uh, like this on, on uh, Windows. It's all a bit different. So uh, hopefully you have Linux or Mac OS running, then you can just follow along exactly what I do here. All right, Docker is installed. So what we want to do now to run a container is say docker run, then we give the name of the image, we'll use neo4j in the version 4.1.9, right? So this would start up the container, but what we also need to do in order to access the data on the container and access the web interface is we have to map a couple of ports. So we want to publish a local port, so we want to map a local port 7474. This is for the web interface to the same port in the container 7474. So this means that your local TCP port 7474 will be sort of forwarded to the same port inside of the Docker container, and then we need to publish a second port that's for the binary protocol that Neo4j uses called Bolt. And the um, port for this one would be 7687. And again, we'll map that to 7687. So the same port inside of the container. Now, uh, if we run it like this, then we will have no persistence of our data. So if we stop and remove the container, all our data will be lost. Now you can do that, um, but if you want to keep the data that you put into your database, then you can also map um, a volume. So we'll map a, a local directory. Um, in this case, if we do it like this and use a local directory, we have to use an absolute path. So in my case, that's users, my username. Then I have a directory called tutorials. And inside of that directory, we'll have a directory called Neo4j data. So this directory does not have to exist. It will be created for you if it's not already there. And then we'll map that to the slash data directory inside of the container. All right, again, we would be good to go. Uh, if we execute it like this, then this means that the container would run in the foreground and, you know, sort of block our terminal. Now, if we want to still have access to our terminal, we can send the container to the background using the command line argument minus D. So if we, if we run it like this, what will happen now is it will look for the image of Neo4j locally on your machine. If it's not there, it will just go to the internet and try to pull this down. This will take some time, so I'll speed up the video. All right, so the uh, image download was finished and the container has been started. This is a hash for the container. Um, so that you can reference to it. What you can do now is execute docker space ps to see the running containers 
Um, what you also could do is docker logs and then use, for example, the name of the container here or the part of the container ID, the hash. So this one is a hash that's unique for the container on your machine. Both of those things you can use to reference to your running container. Right, so we'll just see the logs uh, and we see that everything on this machine has been started correctly. So the container is running and we can access it. Right, so let's go over to our machine. So this is an old session. Um, you don't need this browser here, but you need the slash in the back. So go to localhost um, colon 7474 slash. Right, so this will open up the browser um, or the, the, the browser GUI for your container running in the background. And then just log in with username neo4j and password also neo4j. Just click connect and I'll save this one. So if we log in for the first time, what we need to do is configure a new password. I'll just use pass here for demonstration purposes. All right, so now we're good to go. We're logged in. Up here we see our command prompt where we can execute um, cipher commands. So let's just quickly create a node here. Let's just call it node or let's just make it a node of type node and give it a name and the name would be my first node all right so that's that we can just create it and then we'll see if we click here there's a node that we've just created now I've made another video uh, with an introduction to the Cypher query language, how you can create nodes, create relations and stuff like that. If you want to um, dive a little bit deeper into the Cypher query language, you can look at that video. Um, but in this tutorial, we'll just go back to our command line and stop the Docker container. So what we can do now is stop the Docker container with the name, or let's use the container ID in this case. So you get a confirmation with the container ID. So this means the container has been stopped. Now, if you do Docker PS, you'll see that there is no more container running. Now we can do Docker PS minus A this will show you the containers that have been stopped. So this container is still there, but has been stopped. Now what you can do is of course, you can start this container again, just type Docker start, and then again, the name or the container ID. This will start up your Docker container again. And let's just go back to the, to the browser. Again, don't forget the slash here. Right, so now we're connected again to our container. Now the information that we still had in open session, this is gone, so we have to log in again, but the password is still pass in my uh, case, the, the one that I set up before, because as I said, the data um, is persistent. And also, if we go here to the database information, we see that our node is still there, so all our data is still there. Right, so let's go back. Um, let's uh, stop and remove this container. So stop the container and we'll remove the container. All right. So now if we do docker ps, there's no container. And if we do docker ps minus a, minus a, then you'll see that there's also no stopped container. So the container is gone completely. What's of course still there is um, the directory neo4j data. And inside of that, 
the database and all the, the other data that uh, the container and the database use. So that's still there. So what we can do now is we can just spin up a new container. We'll just use the same parameters as before, of course, use the same mapping so that we'll have this data that we had there. We'll just restart a new or start a new container. Again, do docker ps. Now, what we see is that we have a new container ID. You probably won't remember the old one, um, but you know you certainly see that this is a new name that we haven't used before. So this is a completely fresh container. And again, let's go back to our browser window, restart this. And again, of course, we, we have been locked out. So again, let's log in. Let's use pass as the password. So that's still the new password that we set up. And we're on our server again. And as you can see, all the data is still there that we've set up. All right, so let's go back again. Now again, we'll stop the container. Oh, that's the old ID. Docker stop, name of the new container, and docker rm, name of the new container or the ID. So this one's gone. And now um, to completely clean up after us, if we, if you don't want to have uh, a Neo4j um, container anymore and want to save the space on your hard disk, what you could do is remove the image. So say docker image rm and then remove the Neo4j with the tag 4.1.9. So this will remove the image or the parts of the image that you see here. So now everything considering Docker that we've set up is gone from our machine. What of course is still there is the directory that we've mapped. So uh, we could download an image again and restart a container and map the database and still work with that data. So let's also remove this and there you go everything is gone so now we're not using up any more space from our little test here with the neo4j database all right if you have any questions if there's something that you want me to cover um, concerning neo4j running on docker then just write it in, in the comments. Uh, as I said, also check out this other video that I did on Neo4j and the Cypher language that will get you started. And yeah, see you in a couple of other videos, hopefully. Have fun.